You are listening to KZT Corazon Online Live. My name is Newton Ha. As today's Bible, July 10th, 2022, this is read by Pastor Savannah Mandel. I'll be reading the narration that will be autocast through Facebook and YouTube channels. Today's mystery message, the idea of togetherness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And Psalms 71, 16. May your holy nation come, what you have done, may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Psalms 71, 16. I will come in the strength of the Lord God. I will tell about how right and good you are in you alone. I know God wants to speak to us tonight. And I love the theme for tonight. I was so excited. I love flowers. Anyone love flowers? I love flowers. You know, I was thinking back when I was like in junior high, elementary school, you know. I'm not an artist. I did not get blessed with that. I, but you know what I could draw? I could draw a really good flower. Yes. Amen. I would just doodle flowers. But I love flowers. And I love the visual about blooming and blossoming, and that's God's desire for each of us, not to survive, girls, not to be in survival mode, but to thrive. He wants us to thrive. He wants us to go from glory to glory to glory, strength to strength, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about walking in strength, not just a season of strength, He wants you to live daily strong in him, flourishing and growing, planted in his house. And when I think about that, I think about Psalms 92. I love the Psalms. We've been going through the Psalms as a sisterhood, girls, haven't we? We've been going through it. Um, It's been amazing, our, our Psalms journey. And I just love diving into the Psalms. There's so much, so many layers in the Psalms. So many layers in the word of God, but just the Psalms are so encouraging. They're so refreshing. And Psalms 92, it gives us a beautiful picture of what it is to flourish. And I want you to get out your Bibles. I want to get you to get out your notebooks because I'm believing that God's going to speak to you tonight. That it's going to be his Holy Spirit that's going to speak to you about how he can strengthen you, how you can walk in strength. And Psalms 92 says this, but the godly will flourish like a palm tree and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. I think there's a word right there for someone tonight. You might think, I'm done. God doesn't have anything for me. Nope, you're gonna still produce new fruit, friends. Doesn't matter your age or your stage of life. Don't discount yourself. God still wants to use you. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare the Lord is just. He is my rock. Amen to that. Yes. And you know, there's two pictures that the psalmist gives. Two very vivid pictures. I'm a visual person. I love like, I love when to see pictures. I like things, I like thinking pictures. And I love how the psalmist, he, he doesn't just say, you know, be, be strong, be steady, flourish. No, he's like, okay, what does a person look like if they're strong? What does a person look like if they're flourishing? What does a person look like if they're planted in the house of God? What does that look like? And he gives us two specific visuals. And the first one is, but the godly will flourish like a palm tree. I love Florida. I love heat. I love the beach. Man, I think about a palm tree and I'm just like, yes, amen. Take me there, Lord. Yes. But you know what? Palm tree to the Jewish people, they, they knew what that represented. They would, in Judea, there were palm trees everywhere. Everywhere they looked, there were palm trees. And they were a symbol of fruitfulness. They were a symbol of steadfastness, of longevity, of health. You know, these are some crazy things about palm trees. I was studying palm trees, and I didn't quite realize this. I didn't know how how big they get, but they actually grow to 69 to 75 feet tall. That's like the average palm tree size. But 
in the Andes Mountains. My grandma found this out. Props to my grandma. She's my, my study partner, yes. My, my theologian, the family theologian about palm trees. But in the Andes Mountains, there is a palm tree that is 200 feet tall. Okay, that's 20 stories tall. That is one big palm tree. I mean, like that would hit the ceiling and go beyond. That is a huge palm tree. They live around 100 years. They're very durable. Have you ever been watching the weather channel and there's a hurricane and like the weatherman is like getting blown around and they're trying to give the weather report and you're thinking, why are they even there? Like they need to take shelter. That's always what I'm, I'm like praying for the weather person. Like stop telling me about the weather, just go take shelter. But, um, but the palm tree like is behind them and it's swaying, but it's not breaking. It's durable, it's steady, it's strong. It can withstand the storms of life. Palm trees provide great shade. Their branches are 13 to 20 feet long. That's huge, huge branches. And you know what? Palm trees produce fruit in every single season. Every season. There are specific palm trees like, you know, in the winter, they're producing fruit. In the spring, they're producing fruit. In the summer, they're producing fruit. In the winter, they're producing fruit. And palm trees were so valued and, you know, just like looked upon as, you know, amazing. And, and um, you know, just the, the Jewish people were just ah oh, palm trees that King Solomon actually had them on in his, in, um, in the temple. He had them displayed on the walls. He had them all over. Like palm, the, the Jewish people idolized palm trees. They didn't worship them, but they were like, wow, they, they knew they, that palm trees were pretty incredible trees. You know, when you think about Jesus and he came into Jerusalem, what did the people do? They laid down palm branches. Palm branches represent victory too. So when a, a king or an emperor would enter into a city, that was the custom to do. That's why they did it for Jesus. So the palm tree was very important to the Jewish people. And then not only does the psalmist mention palm trees, but the psalmist also mentions cedars of Lebanon. And I've heard a little bit about cedars of Lebanon, but I didn't really know exactly, like when you read the Bible, they're mentioned, I think like 70 plus times throughout scripture. You see cedar trees, cedars of Lebanon, and you're like, what does that mean? I mean, a cedar tree? Like, yeah, we know what cedar trees are. No, these are different trees. I mean, they're gonna show a picture. They're, they're huge trees, huge. Isn't that a beautiful tree? It's incredible. And the Jewish people would know what this is. These were sought after trees. They would grow up to 100 to 120 feet tall, 30 to 40 feet around the trunk, huge. They were aromatic. They smelled good. They were valuable trees. They were sought after. They were exported, a major export and source of wealth and income. And actually King Solomon's palace, much of it was built out of the cedars of Lebanon. So you can see why the psalmist, he picks these two prominent trees, trees that stood out in this region, they stood out in the Middle East and, and people were like, yeah, man, a palm tree, that's an amazing tree. Oh, a cedar tree, that's a, that's a valuable tree. That's a sought after tree. And the psalmist says, you know what? God wants us to be like a palm tree. God wants us to be like a cedar tree. God wants us to be strong. God wants us to flourish in all seasons. God sees us as valuable. Did you know you're valuable to God? You're worth to God. You're worthy to him. You're sought after to God. He's seeking after your heart tonight. He's saying, she's my daughter and I want her. She's so valuable to me that I'm gonna send my son. I sent my son for her because that's how valuable she is to me. The psalmist is saying that. He's saying, you're valuable. You're worthy. God wants you to be strong. God wants you to be immovable. You know, but the truth of the matter, girls, that doesn't just happen. <laughs> Those trees didn't just happen. Trees don't just become strong overnight. It actually takes time. You have to nurture a tree. 
you have to, you have to be, t- make a decision to take care of a tree. And I think about, you know, myself, I don't have a green thumb. I'm not blessed with that. That's not, that's not one of my gifts. Actually, this little succulent right here, I do succulents. That's what I do, okay? Because they're easy. <laughs> they're easy. But I bought this succulent last year. So praise the Lord, it's still alive somehow. Um, and barely, actually, I literally thought this was dying. I don't give it the time of day. This poor little succulent. You know how I water plants? This is in my office. I water them when I realize that I have a water bottle that has a little water left in it. And I'm like, no, I'll just pour it in there. (laughs) And the truth of the matter is that's very rare that I have water bottles around me because I don't drink enough water. (laughs) That's why they put this right here for me. I might put a little water in my plant, you know, but... But I literally thought this was dying. And last week, no joke, this last week, um, someone came into my office and they, they, I was like, kind of embarrassed. I'm like, yeah, my plant's dying. Sorry, like just talking to them. And they said, oh no, it's not. And I was like, really? It's like brown and the leaves are kind of withering. And they're like, no, it's not. It's actually an endangered succulent plant. I love plants that much. That's why I bought it <laughs> to help it. <laughs> endangered. I was like, okay, tell me more. Um, they like, it's endangered and it's actually very healthy. I was like, ooh, okay. I can say I have a green thumb now. <laughs> but it's like sprouting. I realized that it's like new growth is coming. You know, don't you wish this was how easy every plant was? I'm like, I got to stick with succulents. I got to stick with succulents. <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, we can't treat our spiritual life like that, right? We can't set our spiritual life to the side and say, yeah, I'll water it when I want to. I'll pay attention to it someday and expect to be a palm tree, expect to have fruit, expect to flourish, expect to grow, expect to see God do amazing things in our lives. He says he wants to. But we have to be intentional to take care and nurture what God has given us. We have to nurture it, girls. And you know what? David talks about this. Or actually, I should say, the Bible talks about David realizing this. In 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, it said, David strengthened himself in the Lord. It doesn't say God strengthened David. David strengthened himself in the Lord. He took the initiative to say, God, you've given me tools and I'm going to own it. I'm going to strengthen myself in the Lord. And you know what? He didn't wait. That When this was written, he hadn't even become king. He was actually still running from Saul and running for his life. And it was kind of a no name. He hadn't been ki- become king. He hadn't seen God's promise fulfilled in his life. But it says, you know what? He made a choice even before that promise happened to strengthen himself in the Lord. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna strengthen myself in the Lord. I'm gonna own the responsibility for my spiritual temperature. And the truth of the matter, girls, God is, he is doing powerful things. He is pouring out his spirit, not just at James River Church, but we're praying across Southwest Missouri and beyond. I know we have churches represented here from across Southwest Missouri. I know we have some girls from Summit Park Church. Oh, yes, yes. And other churches, God wants to pour out his spirit. But we have to say, God, I'm going to take the initiative. I'm going to jump in with both feet, God. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I'm going to lean in and I'm going to strengthen myself in the Lord. So what does that look like? What does that look like to strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Because we can be like, oh, that sounds nice. And yeah, yeah, strengthen yourself in the Lord. I'm going to give you some, some tools in scripture of how to do that. How to become a movable how to become strong in the Lord that I think will really help you because that's God's desire. And the first one is praise, which we just did. I love that. I didn't want to stop praising. I was like, let's keep going. Another song. I was like, Lord, turned around to a girl behind me. Her name is Brooklyn. Go Brooklyn right over here. And I was so encouraged to watch her praise. I was so just strengthened in her passion for praise 
that her desire and her focus was on the Lord. And I just watched, and honestly, all of you were leaned into the Lord and, and pray, what praise is and why it's so powerful is it's focusing completely on God. It's taking time to put away all the distractions and say, God, it's just about you. God, I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna allow my, my heart, my soul to reach up for you, God. I'm gonna lean towards you. I'm gonna lift my hands, God, and surrender. I'm gonna say, you're, you're acknowledging, God, you're all I need. God, you're all I want. And you know, when you think about a tree, trees, you know what, they reach for sunlight. I was at my brother's house the other day and he was pointing out the tr a tree and he said, look at that tree, it's leaning towards the sun. It's, it's craving the sun and that's what worship is. We're saying, you know what? I don't care about all of this stuff. I'm gonna lean towards God. I'm gonna lean towards the sun. I know that I need the Lord. I know that I need him more than trying to f fix my circumstances. I know that I, I need him and I wanna be in his presence. I wanna be where he is. That's all that matters. You know, when, you, when, the, when trees get sunlight, there's a process called photosynthesis. Do you guys remember hearing about this? Like fifth, sixth grade, yeah, good old photosynthesis. And when trees get sunlight, the plants trap the light energy within their leaves. And plants use the energy of the sun to change water and carbon dioxide into a sugar called glucose. They need that. You know, when we're in God's presence, his presence gets in us. When we spend time with the presence of the Lord, the sun, this energy from the sun gets in the tree. The same as when you take time to praise the Lord. When you're in his presence, it changes you. It changes you. You know, we're created to worship and God deserves our worship. But he's so good that he's not just saying, I want you to worship me. He's like, I wanna be with you. I want to change you. I want to transform your mindset. I want to do something. There's some things that will only happen in worship. There's some things that will only happen when you spend time with the Lord and you're in his presence and you're fully surrendered. You're like, God, I'm going to fully surrender to you. I'm just going to worship just you and me. There's some things that will only happen in worship. There's some battles that will only be won in worship. Think about Jericho. I don't know if you know that story, but Joshua and the Israelites, they were called to take Jericho. It was a huge city with a ginormous wall around it. It would be impossible for them to win that battle. You know, they had an army and all of that, but you know what God told them to do? He told them to worship. That was their tool to win the battle. You know, some of you are trying to win a battle and God's saying, worship. God's saying, praise me. Stop trying to figure out the solution. Stop trying to figure out all the answers. You praise me before the answer. You praise me before the victory. You praise me in the midst of the sorrow to bring a sacrifice of praise. David said, I'm gonna bring a sacrifice of praise. You praise him and you watch him strengthen you. You praise him and you watch him change situations around you. He'll do it, girls. It's not that he can't, he's just waiting for your surrender. He's just waiting for you to trust him. He can. He's just waiting for you to push pause well, long enough to be in his presence and say, God, I'm done trying to fix this. God, I'm just gonna worship you. I'm just gonna praise you. I'm just gonna pause. I'm just gonna pause. Stop trying to fight the battle. Stop saying, well, when this is done, I'll praise the Lord. Or when I get the answer, I'll praise the Lord. You praise him in the waiting. You praise him even with the questions. You praise him even if tears are running down your face. You say, God, I'm gonna praise you. I talked to a girl and she said, I've been battling 
battling depression. But when I came in tonight, there was joy that came into my heart. That is true. That is true. The Bible says he will turn your mourning into dancing. But it happens in his presence. It happens when you praise him. Some of you tonight, you've been, you've been waiting. I really feel strongly about this. You've been waiting to praise the Lord. And God's saying, don't wait. Don't wait. Run to me. Praise me in the meantime and watch me fight for you. He's going to fight for you while you praise him. You don't have to fight for yourself. He's going to fight for you. Praise is your weapon. Praise makes you strong. Praise changes you, transforms you. It wins battles. Second way we strengthen ourselves in the Lord is by standing on his promises. Standing on his promises. Do you know how many promises are in scripture? This is gonna, this is gonna blow your mind. Like, are you ready for this? Are you ready for your mind to just be like, ex just explode? You guys don't seem too ready. I think I won't tell you. I don't think. Just kidding. <laughs> there are over 7,000 promises in scripture for you and me. 7,000 girls. 7,000 scriptures. 7,000 promises that God gives us. And when we feed off those promises, guess what? They strengthen us. Some of you are weak. It's because you've forgotten the promise. You're weak because you've forgotten God is for you. You're weak because you forgot that God loves you. You're weak because you forgot that God says you're more than a conqueror. Feed upon the promises. You got to feed upon the promises. You know, plants need nutrients. They, they can't survive without nutrients. They can't, if they are like planted and they're not, they're not fully in the soil, they're gonna die. They have to be deep in the soil. You know what? You gotta dive deep in God's word. You gotta stand, you gotta know those promises because you know who's gonna, who's gonna come and, and try to like discourage you. The enemy's gonna say, mm -mm, he doesn't care about you. Uh-uh, no, he's not for you. Look at this situation you're facing. Man, your, your husband wouldn't be treating you this way. Your job wouldn't be going this way. If you say, if you're not in the promises, if you're not treading in the promises, if you're not living in the promises, if you're not feeding your soul with the promises, you're gonna believe his lies. You're gonna say, oh yeah, the enemy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, yeah. But if you know his promises, they're gonna get deep in your soul. They're gonna become deep within you, so deep. You know, plants, I, I'm telling you all that, I feel like I've become a plant like novice, you know, and I've just studied them so much, but I love all the analogies. I love it. Plants store away nutrients for later. You know what? When we have God's word in our heart, certain promises come to mind at certain times that you'll recall. Okay, you're going through something and you're like, oh, I remember this promise. I read it last week. Oh, I remember this. Pastor talked about this last month. Oh, I remember this. This was in my devotions. Oh, I remember that. God will bring promises to you. Store them in your heart. You need it so you can feed on it day after day. God will bring them to you. And I want to read a couple promises over you because this is for every single girl. There's not one girl that these promises don't apply to. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you. Everyone say that. For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's you, girls. He says, for I know the plans I have for Brittany. For the, I know the plans I have for Ashley. For I know the plans I have for Kim. He has plans for you. Tread in that promise. Hold on to that promise. Joshua 1, 9, do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. There's not one place you go that God's not with you. He's with you. Philippians 4, 19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. All God's riches 
are yours. That's a promise. You lack nothing. You don't lack anything. You have to say, okay, I'm gonna trust that promise and I'm gonna receive that promise. James 1, 5, if anyone lacks wisdom, I just said you don't lack anything, but listen to the rest of the verse. You should ask God who gives generously to all, to all, every single girl, everyone, without finding fault, and it will be given to you. You know, some of you, you know those promises, but maybe God's giving you a specific promise. And because it hasn't happened, you kind of set it to the side. You've kind of forgotten about it. And God's like, do you remember that promise I gave you? I might have given it to you five years, 10 years. You know, there's a, there's a promise in my Bible and I have it marked. God gave it to me two years ago. I know it was from the Lord. Have I seen it come to pass? No. But do I read about it? Do I go back to that passage, just a passage of scripture? Yes. Because I say, God, even though I haven't seen it, doesn't mean it's not gonna come to pass. I'm gonna feed my soul with that promise. I'm gonna believe that promise. But you know, in order for a promise to happen, we actually have to take an action step. There's nutrients in soil, but the tree actually has to receive the nutrients. It has to spread out its roots. We have to be, we have to be proactive and saying, God, I'm standing on that promise. You know, God is not responsible for your potential. He gives you promises. He wants it. He says, girl, I have this for you, but you have to believe it. You have to walk in it. You have to receive that promise. You have to hold on to that promise for it to come past, to pass in your life. I think about Abraham and Sarah. They waited 25 years. God gave them a promise. God said, you're gonna bear a child, Sarah. Guess what? She was 100 years old, okay? That's crazy, crazy. <laughs> I don't think there's any 100-year-old women in here who are pregnant. If there are, come talk to me. That's amazing. <laughs> but God gave them a promise, but they waited 25 years for it to come to pass. They held on to that promise, and they trusted the Lord with it. They said, God, we're going to trust you. They did, the Bible says they didn't waver in their faith, but they were strengthened God wants you to become strengthened in your waiting for the promise to happen. And I felt like this when I was preparing for this message that there's some girls in here tonight and you've been waiting to conceive. And that promise that God gave Sarah, it's for you. And I'm speaking that it's gonna happen. So receive that promise tonight that God is faithful to his promises, that he's faithful not just for those who are wanting to conceive. I really believe that's for someone here. But if God's given you a promise, hold on to it. Tread in that promise. Trust God in that promise. Feed yourself with the promises of the Lord. Go back to scriptures that he's given you. Allow it to feed your soul and watch God fulfill. He will. Watch God fulfill every single promise in your life. And that brings me to the, the third point, strengthening yourself in the Lord. You know, when we, when we strengthen ourselves in the Lord, there's a pruning process. There's a pruning process that happens. You know, if you're a gardener, you have plants around your home, you have to prune them. You have to prune them. I think about roses. I, I love roses. They're so pretty. And, you know, it, it makes, when I see people prune their rose bushes, it can make me like cringe because I'm like, oh. Why are you doing that? You're hurting the plant. And they're like, no, we're not. And you know, who is the master gardener? God. He's the master gardener. And the gardener of the rose bush prunes because they know that if they prune, actually it will make the bush stronger, flourish more. If they don't prune, it could hurt the bush. It could hurt the rose bush. And the same is true for you and I, girls. That God is the master gardener and he's so gentle and he's so good and he's so kind and he's so loving. Sometimes we can look at holiness and purity and we can go, oh, God, you're just so rigid. You know what? It's the exact opposite. God's like, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. 
You allow me to prune your heart. I want to take things off that are dead and dying, that are decaying, that aren't going to produce more fruit in your life because I have plans for you. Because I want you to reach that promise that he's so caring. He does it because he cares. John 15, one says this. This is Jesus talking. I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will bear even more fruit. Isn't that beautiful? Why does he prune? Why does, why does the gardener, the heavenly father prune us? Why does he point things out in our lives and say, you know what, I see that. I see that in you. Let's address that. Let's, why don't you rewind the tape and maybe go apologize to that person? I had to do that today, by the way. <laughs> I got pruned today, okay? Got pruned. But pruning is good because it produces fruit. It produces fruit. And girls, God wants us to be fruitful. God wants you to have a multiplication impact. To not just produce fruit in one season. God's like, no, I actually have more fruit for them to produce the next season and the next season. But it's going to take trimming some branches in their life. It's going to be pruning. It's going to be me pinpointing things so that they can become more and more like me. So that they can become more in my image. That's God's heart. He wants us to reflect him to the world. But that takes becoming less like us and more like him. Drawing near to him and saying, God, all of me is for all of you. God, you can, you can do surgery on my heart tonight. God, I want to be more like you. And Lord, if there's areas in my life that don't honor you, God, you can have access to them. And I know you're going to be gentle. And I know you're going to be good. And I know, Lord, you want to do it so I can bear more fruit. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this, and we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. That's what he wants to do. He wants to make us more and more like him, but it's through daily surrender, daily offering our lives and saying, God, I'm a sacrifice. And whatever you see fit to do in me, God, I want you to do it so that I can, I can grow. I can flourish, Lord. I can become more like you, Lord. I can become strong. I want to become strong in you, Lord. And that happens through a pruning process. And I feel like all of these lead up to this last one. You know, God wants to prune us because he loves us. He wants to cut off some branches. He wants us to stand on his promises, to take him at his word. He, his desire is that we would praise him and worship him and long to be in his presence. But you know what? He also wants to pour out his spirit on us. You know, trees need water. They can't survive without water. And a cedar tree when you look at the cedar tree, one acre of cedar trees absorb 55 gallons of water per year. 55 gallons of water. One single cedar tree drinks up 30 gallons of water a day. You know, girls, God didn't intend for us to just be sprinkled with his presence. Just to say, okay, come to Design Sister Night and I'm just gonna give you a little sprinkle of my presence and then you're good to go for a whole year. You would, that's not, that's not what he intended. You know what he intended? He intended a downpour of his presence on us. He intended for us to be soaked in his presence, dripping in his presence so that wherever we go, people get wet. That we're just, we're just overflowing with the presence of the Lord. We just, we just live in a constant downpour of his presence. That's what he desires. Wherever you go, that his presence
presence would come upon you. He, des he desires that we constantly live thirsty. You know what the Bible says? Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. Are you thirsty tonight? Are you hungry for him? Are you satisfied with just a little drizzle? Are you like, God, I want you to rain down on my life. I'm hungry for all that you have for me, God. I'm not satisfied to just live a cute little Christian life. I've been really thinking about that lately. I don't want that. I don't want to be like, man, Savannah loved Jesus, period. That's great. Savannah pursued Jesus with all of her heart and experienced his presence in a powerful way. Girls, we choose how much of the presence of the Lord we want in our lives. We choose if we want to drizzle, drip, or if we want a downpour. And the trees that get the downpour, they're the strong trees. They're the flourishing trees. They're the vibrant trees. They're the fruitful trees. They're the trees that don't just provide a little shade, but they're the trees that provide a great amount of shade. They bless the people around them. God wants you to be a blessing to people around you. He doesn't want you just to be like, oh, your Christian walk is great for you. No, he wants you to overflow to every person you come in contact with. That when you bump into people, they're like, what's in that girl? Whoa, she's different. Yeah, I knew she loved Jesus, but man, she has like this anointing and this power upon her life. That's not just for pastors. That's for every single girl, no matter your age. I, I believe that God wants to pour out His Spirit. No matter the age, I believe He wants to do it tonight. We've been praying for that. We're believing that God's gonna pour out His Spirit, but we gotta be hungry. He's gonna do it on those who are hungry. He wants to do it. It's His desire. Acts 2, 17 says this. And let me just preface, we're living in the last days. It says this, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. It's God's desire to do it, girls. He longs to pour out his spirit. He's waiting for us to just say, God, drench us. Acts 2, 38 to 39 says this, Peter replied, so Peter stands up, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise belongs, there's the word promise, okay? It's a promise, this is one of the promises. The promise belongs to you. I want everyone to point to yourself. It belongs to you and your children and all who are far off to all whom the Lord our God will call to himself. If you're a believer, if you know Jesus Christ, then God wants to pour out his spirit upon you. He has more for you. He wants to fill you up with his presence overflowing, girls. He wants you to be strong and courageous. He wants to fill you with a boldness to believe his word, a boldness to declare his word to a dying world. But it's gonna be us who are full of the spirit. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. We need to be empowered by his spirit to walk boldly. God wants this sisterhood to be courageous. God wants this sisterhood to be known as girls who are full of his presence. And we're gonna pray for that. We're gonna pray that God pour us out of the Spirit. We're gonna believe that He's gonna do that. Because that's His desire. His desire is that all of us would flourish, that all of us would grow, that all of us would continue to be hungry and go from glory to glory to glory. Not missing out on one thing that He wants to do in our lives so that we can be strong and immovable for His kingdom. Thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. 
Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we want to let you know that we'd love for you to be a part of our online family. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll be so glad you did because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and it helps you know when we go live for our weekly services. We hope you have an amazing day and thank you again for watching. God bless.